Jazz, organize a battle unit. We're going after them. Tailbreaker! What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of George Reviews, and I'm back on the countdown. I have been counting down the 1984 Hasbro Transformer collection in numerical order, and I am up to number eight in the catalog, and it is Autobot Trailbreaker right there and I'm going to mark him off in the catalog number eight and in front of me is Autobot Trailbreaker Trailbreaker is a Toyota Helix um, 4x4 camper And looks very convincing in this mode. This guy rolls gray. He sits on rubber tires. And before I get too deep into that, I'm going to rewind past 1984 and tell you that this figure, the mold for this figure, was originally designed and marketed by a company called Takara in Japan in their car robot line known as Daiya Clone. And in that toy line, this figure came in several different colors. He came in a black, just like this, with um, a different sticker sheet applied to him. It was like mostly yellow. Put a picture in right next to it. He also came in a yellow that is very, very hard to find. And it is very expensive. I would love to own that yellow. And also a blue. And the blue mold was actually released in the United States under Diacron name from Steel from Takar. And he was released along with the toy that became Sunstreaker and the toy that became Ironhide. I believe that Ironhide was black and that Sunstreaker was red. It was only those three figures actually released in U.S. markets under the name Diacron. All right, let's take a closer look at Trailbreaker's vehicle mode. He actually has a blue translucent uh, driver's side window which eventually for forms the shoulder a translucent blue windshield same thing on the other side he even has a transparent window on the side of the little camper part which is very cool the top part is represented by a sticker and again on this side and that is very cool they put a lot of detail into the vehicle mode a lot of people argue that the vehicle modes are much better than the uh, robot mode. But I believe he pulls both modes off very convincingly. In front of his grill is vac metal, uh, chromed out, and you can see mine is um, exhibiting some play wear. Where you can see the red underneath. He has a molded in door and a molded in door handle, which is very cool. Some stickers going down the side. Depicting some pinstriping on the vehicle. Both sides says four wheel drive. And he has rubber tires with chrome rims. Actually says something on the tires. I'm trying to see it. My, my eyes aren't good enough to see it nakedly. I'm trying to look through the lens. The monitor, I'm sorry. I'm trying to look through the monitor. And it says Desert Dog, just like Optimus Prime. And the treads look great. Big beefy tires. Underneath, you can see the legs hanging out. Kind of a giveaway down there. I guess if you didn't know, you might think that was like some type of piping exhaust or something. Well, not too bad. Behind him, you can see plastic molded in tail lights. Red plastic molded in tail lights. A separate plastic than the black truck, which is a nice touch because usually they just like hit it with some paint or even leave out the molding. Oh, and, and the reverse of the vehicle, he has a transparent window back there too, which is very, very cool very solid vehicle and also he has this little compartment right here and if you see my wheel jack review i'm going to tell you because of the diaclone line that i referred to earlier you can take a pilot and i have one same one i use wheel jack and it is a seat and you can take this little guy and sit him inside so if you were a kid and you knew Hopefully I got the right one. 
like these, these guys come in different sizes and shapes like the suits are different and you can put this little pilot in there and I, I smush mine in there this might not be the right guy but anyway in, in that diaclone toy line the vehicles were just um were um cars that turned into like combat suits just like they were used just like the voltron force used the voltron lions like robotech used the super valkyries and they would use the vehicle mode until the fight got hot and heavy and then they would transform and or change mode because i'm sure it wasn't called transformer and they would change modes and they were all piloted each individual car i ain't gonna be able to get the guy out now <laughs> all right give me a second all right, I got him. Just needs to turn off. So each individual vehicle was piloted by these little guys, made out of plastic and die cast with magnetic feet. And uh, like I said, they would suit up sort of like Power Rangers style, and they would wear this suit and hop inside. What was the one Power Ranger show where they actually drove cars? Well, it was sort of like that. And these guys would get inside and drive the vehicles in the diacon lines. These guys were not sentient robots and living beings. As far as I know, you know, there's no cartoon floating around. I don't think it's even any storyline material you can actually read. Not that I know of. I had never seen anybody bring it up or talk about it. So that's what I got on that. But fast forward back to the past of 1984. And Hasbro got the licensing, brought this guy to the United States, dubbed him Autobot Trailbreaker. And under Hasbro's brand and marketing, they gave him a bio as written by Bud Budansky. His function for the Autobots is defensive strategist. His motto is an Autobot is only as good as his fuel tank. Trailbreaker makes light of any situation, no matter how serious. Practical joker and cheerleader, but considers himself a liability to the Autobot since he consumes the most fuel. Lacks self-esteem and often acts to be left behind. Projects nearly impenetrable force field. Can jam radio transmissions. He's very slow. Often mopes about his handicaps. But has bravery and defensive policies unquestioned. Alright, let's get to the numbers, the statistics for Trailbreaker. His strength is a 7. His intelligence is a 6, his speed is a 4, his endurance is a 10, his rank is a 7, his courage is a 9, his firepower is a 3, and his skill is a 7. So that is the bio they intended for him. We never really saw him, well, I guess he cracked a few jokes in the cartoon, but they didn't really got into that, and they damn sure didn't get into the fact that he was the Autobot strategist. They never brought that up, not one time. They never got into like their little military background. They were just characters for the cartoon. I mentioned earlier that he is based on a real-life vehicle, a Toyota four-wheel drive Hilux camper truck, and I want to snip in a little pic real quick. As a kid, I got Trailbreaker for my birthday. Never forget it. Uh, I thought it was so cool. I thought he was like big and beefy and hefty. And this figure actually reminded me of some toys I had played with early in my childhood. I thought he was, as a kid, I thought he was based on these little 4x4 vehicles that were battery operated. They took like one AA battery and went underneath. And he would turn it on and the wheels would roll over everything. And for me, it was like being reunited with that toy and then the toy ch -ch 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 transform and hopefully i can dig up a picture with it by the time i post this video and you can see the little four by four and i wonder if it reminded you of the same thing and i wonder if you had the little four by four so anyway um let's check out what trailbreaker came with I, I do not have his box but i have his package accessories and I keep them in these little Ziploc baggies. So I'm going to let loose everything. And first thing I'm going to look at is his instruction booklet. Here's his instruction booklet with the artwork from the box art. Trail Burker looks very cool right there. He even has some little holes attached coming from his midsection down to his kneecap. 
Wonder what that thing is about, but very cool box art. I love how they would draw the hands on the box art for these guys and the tires. Just look at the tires. That, that is very, very nice box art. So, um, Heroic Autobot right there. Trail Breaker. Open up the booklet. Unfold the panels. And in the booklet, we can see his weapons on a tree. It looks like he has two missiles and two. I don't know if those are the um, force field generators or emitters. Two fists left and right, of course. And, uh, and on the cartoon, he used this little thing right here to emit force fields. We well, used several different things. Shows a sticker sheet, trail breaker, trail breaker, transformation, transformation, and on down. And this is the matching booklet to Trailbreaker because he is pre rub It shows you how to use the decoder to read the tech spec. Here is his decoder. I do not have the tech spec. Um, G1 catalog. Even though uh, we just took a look at it. But this is the one that came with him. So it's nice, crispy, and new. But we are going to take a look at it anyway because this is his review. And we're going to look at the Autobots. All these guys and the Decepticons. And we're going to get to each and every one of those. Oh, let me turn it over. I didn't do it. Let's take a look at So I don't have the box. This is the artwork from the reverse of the box of the 1984 figures. Very cool. Very iconic artwork. And I, I threw this in. I got a whole bunch of little booklets in a lot one time. And I threw this in with everybody. I don't believe he was actually packaged with, with this. But he may have been. And there's a mail away for the Power Dashers. And this guy is terrible. <laughs> I'm going to say that in every review this come out. This guy is terrible. Uh, Downshift Overdrive Camshaft. The Autobot Logo Watch Time Warrior. Uh, the little part you would fill out. Reverse of the booklet. And that is pretty much it for all the little paperwork. Let's get to Trailbreaker's plastic accessories and what I have in the baggie. Okay, as follows. I have his two fists left and a right. I have, for some reason, I have three missiles. <laughs> He's only supposed to come with two. I think I was displaying him differently. But um, three missiles, he only comes with two. And the other two little things. I don't think no one ever displayed him with these. You know what I mean? Like, Because, I mean, you didn't see him in the cartoon. So you really didn't know what they were about. So unless you were like double gunning it. And the thing that most of the time he used as a force field emitter on a cartoon. So let's swing over back to Trail Breaker. And let's get him transformed. And the first thing I do, I don't know if it's official. <laughs> no, I just look at the instruction booklet. Let's release these side panels that house the arms. Just like that. Then I would secondly take the, the legs down. And then you slot them open. Apart. Same thing. And then you bring the front of the car down. And kind of lock it in. And it actually like locks. Bring the feet forward. I guess we can set them down now. And then the back just kind of gravity just gets that to transform. Pull the head up. There is his head. Rotate the arms around. They are connected via the windshield which is always you know makes me a little bit nervous it's gonna break. And you have to bring the forearms up in order to get some accessories into him. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add his right fist boom and one of his missiles or guns whatever you want to call it to his left arm because that's how he was seen in a the cartoon then I'm going to add his uh, force field emitter at least that's what I'm calling it so if that's not it I am so sorry I don't want to make anyone angry but that's also what I always thought it was and then in the catalog he had like that's why I had these two he had these two things like set back here on a cartoon, he just really had one, and they just they just sit in these little holes right here, spaces. Not even that, they just kind of sit there. 
Yeah, which is kind of weird, but they don't lock in or anything. But I guess they sit good enough. Or maybe not. I was trying to shake it to show you they would stay, but they did not. I think when you put them both on, it makes them look a little bit more badass. A little bit more threatening. And when I was little, man, I used to always think this guy was, like, overweight. And my friends used to be like, well, um, you can't have an overweight <laughs> robot. But um, Michael Bay kind of showed us that you can have an overweight robot. I think it was Hound had, like, a little gut. I know it was a little Target race car thing. So I'm like, one of those guys. I, I really didn't pay attention too much in Michael Bay movies. But the guy had a little gut. But on the cartoon, he was drawing kind of slender. So let me drop a cartoon pic. But yeah, I thought he looked cool. He was very solid. I love the fact that his uh, feet were not connected via pin. And uh, he has the vac metal legs. The bottom of his feet are die cast. The vac metal forearms, vac metal weapons. He has vac metal on the little vents on the side of his head. We don't know what those do. I'm not sure. Were they really drawing in that well on the cartoon? I'm not really sure. But he has um, a lot of stuff going on, cool stickers. He has these little red bits at the kneecaps and at the um, shins or whatever. But he was a very cool looking robot, very functional robot, I, I think, as far as play value. I'm sure the, the, the missiles don't fire nowhere near as well, but let's check it out. Yeah, at least they still come out. But that was the thing, man. Back in the day, these things would let loose. Fire Decepticons and like everything over there, all the Japan toys, like the giant 12 inch Godzilla was an 18 inch. The tongue would come out and the fist would fly, everything. Transor Z, they made sure uh, the fist flew out on their robots. And again, the spring is not that great. He's an older toy, it's in pretty decent condition, except for the stickers. He's missing the little shoulder stickers. So, um, anyway, I'm gonna do articulation. It is G1, so it's not gonna go nowhere. <laughs> Uh, there is nothing at the head other than the transformation. You can get this out of it. But it is some articulation. The arm will completely 360. He actually hinges at the elbow. And because it is a loading launching port, you can 360 the missile or you can 360 his fist. Why you would want to, I don't know. Then the fist has a slot in it. I guess to save on plastic, but it feels solid other than that little slot right there. And his legs, you can't get anything out of them. I, well, because of the transformation, you can do something. I don't know if he'll stand, but you can get him to look like he's walking or something. And taking a look at his feet, because they transform, I'm losing that missile again. Because they transform, you can get that out of it. So you can get him to do a couple little things. And uh, you just saw that, like, it's a bummer that this backpack doesn't lock. Because the older this figure gets, the more it flops around back there. And I know I, as a kid, I played with this guy to death. Like, uh, he was never the little star in my little storyline when I played. But uh, he was always telling you, I'm tough. You must be getting old, Ironhide. What you need is a force field. And I said, I, I had this guy making force fields all the time. <laughs> That's all he did. All right, let's take a look at this guy with his other weapons since we got him. I'm going to eject this missile and get into this. I don't even know what to call it, a double missile. I, I think on the very first episode when he was flying in the air with Wheeljack, he had this creating a force field. I think I'll stick it on the screen. If I am for sure, if you don't see it on the screen, he thought I was wrong or I just forgot. <laughs> Man, I think he was flying. It was like Trailbreaker. Take a shot at that force field. And he was like, Wheel Jack behind him. So I, I think they incorporated this one time. I know for most of the Transformers that you saw on screen, they tried to incorporate all of their parts and accessories at least one time. And we can take this out, see if it fires it off a little bit, and give him two fists. And this is how he looks with both fists attached. And man, I would have him uppercutting Decepticon. Bow! Bow! He <laughs> got like the Popeye arms. Blow me down. Bluto. Kind of look like Bluto. Very, very cool figure. And 
I had this collect this in my collection for a while. And one day I was watching on eBay and a guy, a third party guy was making like pile drivers for Rumble and Frenzy way before Crazy Debbie, if you know what Crazy Debbie is. And they were making alternate heads for Transformers. And they actually made a cartoon accurate trail breaker head. I didn't lead off with this because uh, I, I display it with this figure. But since this is a straight up G1 review and I want to uh, keep it in as pure as I can. But um, I'm going to go ahead and pause and unscrew. It's just, it takes, it just screws right out the back of his head. Right there. And then you just add the faceplate to the front. It's very simple, very easy. It's made out of a little resin. It's not really glossy. I kept saying I was going to put a, a coat of gloss on it to kind of make it look more plasticky. Is that a word? Well, we're going to make it a word. And get this little head on here. All right, here he is with the cartoon accurate head. Face. And I know people are going to ask me where I got it from. Like, like I said, I got it off eBay or who I got it from. I got it off eBay from a seller. I can't even remember his name. It's been over 10 years. I had this. So I think I grabbed Perceptor and I got I grabbed a couple more faces that were cartoon accurate. And this is one of them. So tell me what you think. Does it look cartoon accurate to you? Okay, it's time to size trail breaker up and run them down. Here he is with Autobot Commander Optimus Prime. Here he is with Autobot Wheeljack. Here he is with Decepticon Communicator Soundwave. Here he is with Mighty Megatron. Here he is with Palette Swap Autobot Hoist. And last but not least, here he is with his Diaclone predecessor, Blue Trail Breaker. All right, it's time to wind this thing down. But before I get out of here, I want to tell you that the voice actor that voiced Trailbreaker in the 1984 cartoon was Frank Welker. And if you don't know who Frank Welker is, cut the video off. Now, Frank Welker voiced Megatron, Soundwave, Ravage, Ratbat, Sludge, and a whole host of other characters. And not to get into the characters outside of the Transformers community. And I'll get to those as I review more toys related to Frank Welker's voice acting. And some buying tips for Trailbreaker. Um, he, he's covered in chrome. So you want to watch for chrome where it's, it's mostly prone near his foot. Where you actually touch it to transform it. And on his forearms. And of course his weapons. So you want to look for good chrome weapons and parts. Um, and you want to always check for looseness on the figure uh, with the tires and the arms and make sure these joints aren't cracked or broken because it's connected by this translucent plastic that's supposed to make up the windshields. And with all vehicles that have, transformer vehicles that have rubber tires, you want to make sure they're not dry rotted or cracked. And please, and you should try to buy complete whenever you can. Make sure he has all his accessories. He comes with two long missiles. Two short twin missiles, this little head um, force field projector, and two fists. And stick aware. You always got, I mean, Avengers Toy is most likely going to have stick aware, but you always want to take a look at stick aware. Uh, that's my buying tips for Trailbreaker. I want to thank you for watching another episode of George Reviews. The reviews where every toy has a story. Leave yours in the comment below.